Hello and welcome to the Beatport Podcast with me, High Class Filter. On today's show, I'll be talking to a legend of the UK bass scene, DJ Zinc. Not many people can claim to have had classic tracks across more than one genre, but DJ Zinc has produced genre-defining tracks from drum and bass, to jungle, to breakbeat, garage, and most recently, bass house. I caught up with Zinc at his London studio, where we talked about his changing musical style over the years, his approach to production, and what has kept him going for a 25-year career. But first, I'm starting you off with a modern-day classic within the bass house scene. This is Gammy Elbow from DJ Zinc and Chris Lorenzo. Beatport Podcast. You're listening to the Beatport Podcast with me, High Class Filter, and right now I'm joined by DJ Zinc. How's it going? But it's going very well, thanks. So, uh, what's, what's been going on? How's 2018 been for DJ Zinc? Uh, 2018 has been a great year. I've been doing this a long time, and from as soon as I can remember doing interviews, which is about 95, 96, I've always had the feeling that if I'm doing the same thing I'm doing this time next year, I'm going to be happy. Uh, and I just would like things to keep going the way they are, and they have been. And this year has been another one of those years where, you know, I wake up every day and do what I want, which is, I realise now, you know, it's a really uh, nice way to be. Yeah, so this year I've been, we've been releasing loads of music on Bingo and that's been going really well. I slowed down on the record label for a while. I, I lost interest in releasing music. Then more recently I've been more interested in it and it's going really well. Uh, and so I've been in the studio loads, which I love and gigs this year have been incredible. So it's been a really good year so far. Yeah, I feel like this year and last year particularly, I I think it's been noticeable that you've kind of picked up the pace in terms of releasing music. So what was it where you had a little love? What what was it about that period? I think that like most of my career and what I do with my time is just pretty much based on what I fancy doing, which means that I was releasing music on Bingo through till about, 2007 doing drum and bass and then some breakbeat stuff and bits and pieces and then I took a year off of DJing because I wanted to stop making drum and bass and I wanted to start doing bass heavy house uh, was the kind of thing I had in mind which didn't really exist as far as I could tell at that time and I had to really uh, search hard for music I, I liked and then in the I took a year off and in that year I discovered stuff like there was some crooker stuff I liked. There was Jack Beats did their first track. Um, AC Slater had some music out, and I realised that other people were having the same sort of a uh, feeling for me to 
get into this sound. And I released some of it, but previously with Bingo, I had been a sort of central part of the drum and bass scene. And so it was sort of natural to get music from people and to be able to find music that I thought other people would want to hear and then release that music. But when I started doing this other thing in 2009, there wasn't, it didn't really seem like there was much of a scene compared to drum and bass. So I just released my own stuff and didn't really pay as much attention to releasing music in the same way. Um, I just made it and then made it available. And then in the last few years, there seems to be that the sort of scene that I was excited about 10 years ago has now sort of uh, developed into its own scene. Having a record label for me is similar to being a DJ. So, you know, when I'm thinking about DJ sets and looking for music, I look at music that I'm excited by, hoping that other people will also be interested and excited by this music. And it's the same with the record label. I hear tracks and I think it would be great to do what I can to get this to a wider audience, to work with these people. So yeah, so in the last few years, I think it's because the scene has been more developed that has encouraged me to, to get back into releasing music regularly and focusing on the record label. Yeah, I think there's a lot of really great producers coming out in that scene at the moment. Also, really young producers as well. Like I see a lot of producers that are coming out now and they're like 16, 17 years old. It makes me feel old. <laughs> yeah, there's a, we've got a guy called Domix uh, who's very young, who releases and his uh, production quality is as good as pretty much anything else that I play. It's exciting to, to think, like you know, the, the potential that these people have because it's really easy to make good quality music now. Whereas when I started, you had to know somebody with a studio or have money to pay for a studio, neither of which I had. So I had, I had like two years of wanting to make music but not being able to make music and not really understanding what went into it, but just sort of collecting samples, thinking that at some point I'm going to get into a studio. But this is like a couple of years. Whereas if I was 16 now, if I didn't have any money for a computer, I could be doing research and stuff like that. And you know, with a very basic computer, you can make a very sophisticated sound, sounding music. So um, yeah, so it's, I think it's, it's an exciting time and there are some really interesting, exciting young producers around. So going back to when you were making drum and bass and then you made the switch to more kind of garage and then more recently the, the bass and house kind of stuff. Was it a process where you were like, okay, this is a scene that's coming up now. I'm gonna kind of uh, try and get involved with this or is it more a, a natural thing where you were like, gonna kind of experiment a little bit more, see how it goes? Yeah, I think the 138 trick and that breakbeat garage stuff, I just had no idea that that was gonna do as well as it was. For me, that was just a, a thing of like, I was making drum and bass, making drum and bass, and I just fancied doing something a bit different. And and it didn't connect with any scene initially. So, I, you know, I gave it to some breakbeat DJs. One of them, Klaus, he said to me, yeah, I played it, it sounded all right. And then some, some I don't think I even played that 138 to any garage DJs, but then some of the pirate DJs like Slimzy started playing it. And it turned into a track that got played in the garage scene. And it did really well, but it wasn't by design. I mean, it, I mean I've never had success by trying to have success. I think that, um, I do all right and I try and do all right. So it's not completely off target. And the, the thing about the switching to house, I mean, I was making drum and bass and playing drum and bass for years and years and years and years. And when I first got into it, everybody that was making jungle in 91, 92, when I got into it, it this was a completely new music, new scene. So everybody necessarily came from somewhere else. Nobody had come from Jungle because Jungle hadn't existed. So, you know, Jumping Jack Frost made music that had rare groove samples. Um, the, certain people made music that had techno or Detroit kind of influence. Some people jazz influence. Some people like all over the place. Everybody, you know, a lot of hip hop influence. So Jungle and drum and bass was really uh, took took uh, influences from everywhere. And so for me, it was really exciting and fast moving and original scene and it was really there was always sort of a new twist around the corner and but it was always moving always changing but then around about uh 2005 2006 i found that a lot of the people that were making drum and bass had grown up on drum and bass and so it just became self-referencing and um derivative i think is the right word and it lost the excitement for me and there was a few producers that i knew these are my friends and I said to one, you know, I, I remember somebody making a track and I thought this is a great track, but it reminds me of a track from eight years ago, very similar. I said to him, oh, it reminds me of that. And he said, I played that old track in a club. It didn't sound very good. So I just made a new version of it. <laughs> and this is, and no one knows this. I mean, I, I know exactly the track I'm talking about. And that for me just wasn't as exciting as it had been. So, so around about that time, I said to my agent, can I do a tour where I play 
a bit of house, a bit of dubstep, a bit of drum and bass, and a bit of breakbeat, I think, were the sort of four things. And when I did that tour, my agent said, yeah, great, let's do it, it's interesting, you know, no one's done it. At that point, it was very like, you're into dubstep, or you're into breakbeat, or you're into drum and bass, but nobody, that you didn't get nights where they mixed it up at all, to the point where I remember Shy FX once playing a garage track in a drum and bass rave, and for weeks everyone was saying like, did you hear Shy played a, a garage track? <laughs> you know, it was like big news. He had played one garage track in the whole night, and everyone was like, wow, what, what do you think about that? Some people saying, oh, I don't think it's right, he shouldn't have done, you know, like, whereas now, you know, the genres get much more blurred. So when I went to do this tour, I went on Beatport and looked for house with bass and just couldn't find any at all. Couldn't find anything that fitted what I was expecting to exist. And that was what really inspired me to make that bass house stuff. And I remember saying to my agent, I I'm gonna take a year off and then I'm gonna just play that music. There is not a scene. There's no one making this music. This is before I'd heard the Cookers or Jack beats, but I'm gonna do it. And he was like, great because he sort of liked the challenge, but it's kind of like jumping off of a cliff, not knowing where you're gonna land. I, it wasn't like, right, how do I how do I have a bit of success? Okay, great, yeah. I'm gonna do this. It was almost the other way around, and quite a few of the people, you know, the drum and bass guys that I was working with closely said, wow, that is really, like, stupid. You know, <laughs> you know like, you're gonna turn down all of the drum and bass gigs that you've got for the next year. A few of them said, I'm really jealous, but I can't afford to, not have the income and not have the status as well. Quite a few of them were like, I, I wouldn't want to start again in another scene mm. because I'm already. It's like going back to square one, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. And I was, you know, I was emailing people like Boy 8 Bit and uh, a few people like one of the guys from uh, Gorgon City, emailing them in the first place saying, Hi, my name's DJ Zinc. I've been making drum and bass for a while, but now I'm interested in this kind of music. And they were coming back to me saying, Well, I've got your fucking super sharp shooter. You know, like, <laughs> I know who you are, but. I was approaching it like, none of these people know who I am, I've just got to start from scratch. So, no, it wasn't calculated. You know, luckily, um, or stupidly, I've just always done what I am personally interested in. interesting what you said a minute ago about 138 track looking back everyone thinks of it as a garage track but at the time that wasn't your intention at all no i mean it, it is a breakbeat it's literally a breakbeat again when i when i thought right i'm gonna play some breakbeat on this tour i'm gonna do let's go on beatport breaks and it's all like this sort of like aggressive 
there's no break beats in it. I thought, where's the funk? Like, I love break beats, and I can't, and I had to really uh, work hard to find stuff I like. Again, which is inspiring. One of the most inspiring things for me as a producer is going through my promos because I can't find anything I like. Almost always, I find it, I really struggle to find stuff that I'm inspired or excited by, which inspires me to go in the studio and make it. Because yeah. I think if I can't find it, I'm just going to make it. So are you getting that same kind of uh, feeling now from the bass and house scene? The bass that you, that you were well, back in 91, 92, that, that yeah. mishmash of uh, influences yeah. you're talking about. I think that um, the bass house thing, I've now been kind of focused on for about 10 years. And in the last few years, I've personally found myself more interested in not just 130 BPM with bass. You know, I did that track with Miss Dynamite in 2011. That, that was the sort of first big track I had in that scene. And more recently, I've been doing some drum and bass again. I, the, the last track I've released is 145 BPM, so it doesn't fit within any, any scene. It, I'm, I'm kind of trying to do a bit more of everything. Um, the bass house thing is great, but it, you know, there's a lot of it around now. It's a lot mm. more popular. So my nature is that I sort of then tend to start looking elsewhere for stuff that interests me. So, so it might be in, into the next uh, the next well, phase of DJ's I, Inc. Yeah, the well, I think that I think that what my next phase will be, which is what I kind of envisaged when I was younger, is to do UK bass. I guess is the kind of the core sound, but then of different tempos. What I'll be doing in the next year will will be rather than just putting out track after track after track that are sort of very similar, I'll be just be doing a bit more weird and wonderful stuff. I think it's quite noticeable as well that you you keep on top of what's happening in the bass music scene in terms of which names are coming through, which producers are coming through. So you've worked with Holy Goof and um, Jack Beats, My New Lay and Chris Lorenzo. Yeah. Do you find that gives you another another layer of challenge to that? It's not really a challenge. It's a uh, it's. It's, I think it's quite fun collaborating and, and it's so much easier nowadays. I mean, I'm just working on a track here that is with Flux Pavilion. I went to his studio, we did some work, you know, we did some demos and now I'm doing a bit here. Then I'll just send him back the stems. He's going to do some work and it's so easy to collaborate. I know it's irrelevant to talk about how things used to be, but you would have to be in the same room on the same day in the studio and whatever you did by the end of the day would be pretty much the, the that's that's our collaboration. You, so things now, it's so, so easy to, to collaborate with people and, um, yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm quite interested in your approach to the production now because, yeah, as you say, it's very easy to collaborate and to get tracks going very quickly with all the software that's available. And as you were saying with the younger producers, kind of get off the ground quite easily as well. Yeah. But uh, we're in your studio, you've got a lot of hardware yeah. uh, around and you're, you're a very well kitted out studio. So do you prefer the software approach now or do you still bring in the hardware at times? Um, I use hardware still. I'm not sure how relevant it is. I don't know how much of it is just sentimental, really. I mean, I've seen some people do mix downs digitally and they get a much better sound than somebody that will do it analog. You know, I think it's more to do with the person than the tools. I'm, I like out, I like Outboard. I think it's because I just grew up looking at magazines where people had that and you thought, oh wow, one day I'm gonna get a Moog. And you know, so I've now got a Moog, but I mean, I, I quite, I, I like it. It's like a hybrid setup that I, that I use, but if I was telling somebody what to get, then I would say, you know, that sort of stuff is, is more, if it gives you a vibe, then cool, but that's it. I've seen some producers who use the stock plugins that come with the door make banging music. Mm. And it's to do with their techniques and to do with their vibe. It's, you know, you can have the, 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 the best plugin in the world. You're not going to make the best track in the world. I think that there are some bits of hardware that I, I think make a significant difference and have a, you know, you can get a sound that would, you'd struggle to get without that particular bit of software or that particular bit of hardware. But in the bigger scheme of when you make a track, it's not, I think that you can make a, a great track just on a laptop. Yeah. Is there anything that you would say is, uh, apart from a laptop, <laughs> that you would say is your, your go-to bit of kit that has really uh, shaped your sound or has really influenced a lot of tracks that you've worked on? I, I use Bitwig for the door and I really like that. I've been using that for about six or eight months. You know, I went to the Bitwig office in, in Berlin about a month ago, and I was talking to him about different features and this sort of stuff. But well, one of the things that really became apparent is, I'm just sitting at this, looking at this thing for like eight, nine hours a day, maybe. It just has to look nice and work smoothly, 
and be intuitive and stuff like that. And it just makes a big difference. You know, this, I've got this Loop Trotter Monster. It's nice to put your bass through. You can get some distortion on it. You can mix a bit of distortion and it's it's possible that there's a plugin that will do exactly the same thing. But I, I would only look at that for like 30 seconds a day. Whereas the, the software that I'm using to make the music, I'm looking at all day long. And so I, when I switched from Logic to Ableton, I was like excited about Ableton because it's like, there's all this shit you can do that you can't do in Logic. It's more creative. And then moving to Bitwig, again, it's like another layer of like, some of the shit you can do is just really, you're more, you're limited by what you can imagine rather than what the software can do. That is, for me, is the most sort of inspiring bit of gear that I use at the moment is Bitwig. I mean, I could do a hardware mix down and a digital one, and I, I bet you I couldn't tell the difference, let alone anyone else. <laughs> like I say, I think that quite a big part of it is just nostalgia and, Software now is just amazing anyway. Like, yeah. I saw yesterday SSL do a, a thing where you pay £15 a month, you can get all of their plugins. And so I've got this soft tube thing, which is it like an SSL track. If you know what you're doing, it stuff sounds like you're using a big mixing desk. I mean, if I've got like a studio session outside of my studio, all I ask for is like a good computer, a good chair, good monitors. That's it really. And that's your office for the day. Yeah, <laughs> because that's all that, you know, that's all you need really, as far as I'm concerned. Talking about DJing a little bit, yeah. Um, do you feel like your approach to DJing has changed at all over the years? And do you notice a change in how the crowds receive your sets? Not like, really. I know that's, I know it's going to be uh, the, the most let down answer <laughs> to a question, but I, not but at all. Like my my approach to DJing is is pretty much the same as production. What would I want to hear? Mm. So if I'm DJing in a club, I'll play what I would want to hear if I was in that club. Mm. You know, part of that is I don't want to hear the same thing over and over and over again. But I've been with DJs and sort of done regular gigs with DJs where their whole set is mix for mix planned completely to be sort of maximum impact, all in key. And some people have got, that I know have been really, really successful and that is their sort of uh, plot. But for me, I think that I would get bored if there wasn't any sort of freestyle element to it. So when I used to play drum and bass, I just used to play whatever I wanted. And you know, there was quite a few tracks that I played for a while that nobody else was playing. I I've kind of always tried to mix a bit of stuff that keeps me entertained. I think I would be more successful if I did it more planned and more considered, but it would not be as fun for me. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing it long term. I'm probably going to be doing this next year. I'm possibly going to be doing it in 10 years time. So, you know, I want to keep myself uh, engaged and excited about what I'm doing. 
So to round things up, it seems like the kind of common theme with your DJing and your production. It seems like you're trying to constantly learn and constantly experiment. So with that in mind, what do you think the future holds? And is there anything that's kind of left to do that you think, yeah, one day that would be like a, a massive goal? that you haven't got around to doing yet? This sort of question often comes up in interviews and people always used to say, what are your ambitions? Mm. You know, what do you, what do you want to achieve? And my ambition has been from, for the last 22 years to be doing this this time next year. So if, ne if this time next year you're sitting here and we're talking about the music that I'm, we're releasing and DJ gigs and all that, that's, then that's it. I'm not, I don't have a thing of like, I, what I really want to do is work with D'Angelo or, <laughs> you know, like make a track in an aeroplane, you know, I don't know, whatever the hell. There's, there's not any, I don't have any ambitions or goals. I, I really enjoy what I do now. And in some ways it might be a negative thing. I'm just not particularly ambitious. You know, I've seen people be ambitious and then have success that I haven't had, but I'm not sure if they're happier or not by it. And I know that I, I wake up every day and take my kids to school, which is nice. You know, some people are not able to do that. And then today I'll be collecting them from school and hanging out with them afterwards. And then in between dropping them and collecting from school, I'm working on music that I want. And then when they go to sleep, I'll work on a bit more music. And at the weekend I'll go and DJ, you know club somewhere and that is a really nice way to exist on in the long term to be able to play music i'm genuinely into is a real result my friends are in different jobs in different walks of life i realize how lucky i am i've had, I had some really shit jobs before i was doing this i worked for eight years i left school at 16 and worked for eight years in different jobs at one point i had three or four jobs at once working in the bakery on a thursday and friday night which was fucking horrible i had a nine to five office job as well and then a saturday morning job and then a saturday afternoon job in a record shop some of it was hard work and some of it was just really really crap boring work and doing that for years day in day out meant that as soon as i stopped doing it i really appreciate that i'm not having to do that anymore and so now i do what i want and i fucking love it you know what i mean and so i don't the, my only ambition is to to continue waking up every day and doing what i want you know yeah it's, it's just a really nice way particularly long term you know like I, I guess if you're interviewing people that are one year into their music career or whatever then they've got ambitions they want to they, they want to headline brixton academy they want to do this they want to do that but you know i've been doing this as a full-time job for 22 years and you know and i've played at some really cool incredible gigs and you know to big crowds great clubs all that sort of stuff i've done all that and it's, that stuff's nice but what is really the best thing is just spending five hours or seven hours a day working on music that I'm really into and being able to hang out with my kids as much as I want. To be able to do that as part of my job is just a really nice way to exist. Yeah, so, so that is it. My ambition is to just carry on exactly as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you talk to a lot of new producers, their ambition might be to do music full time. Yeah. So I suppose that's just a, a continuation yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, for years I wanted to be a producer as a job and I wanted to be a DJ and I wanted to be a producer. For years I really wanted to do it. You should always try and remember that the things that you have now at one point you, you wanted to have those things. You know, so it's easy to take things for granted or to want to have more. But my kids, friends, parents, I talk to them and that you know they're, they're from all different walks of life and they'll be like you're a dj and i'm like yeah you know like <laughs> because it just wasn't a job when when i was young someone's dad wouldn't be a dj you know it just wasn't like a normal job and so they're like and so you're a dj are you and like, where do you dj then and i say well you know fabric or and they're like what is fabric and i'll be like you know it's this club in london and and then i say to them well what do you do and you know they'll say i'll work in a shop or i do this do that lawyer whatever and i just and often i think i'm glad that i'm doing what i'm doing it's just a really nice way to spend years and years of your life beatport podcast huge thanks to dj zinc for chatting to me keep an eye on his label bingo bass for all his new releases and tracks from some of the young artists he mentioned during the interview for the rest of the show i'll be playing some of my favorite bass releases of recent weeks starting with this from i had a dream taken from his shade ep this track's called Come 2018, featuring David Got Sound. DJ, I had a dream. 23, I'm the man. ODN in the palm of my hand. And I go out almost every week and rely on the rave for a drink and a dance. 23, I don't slack. Thinking up schemes, trying to bring them grands. Shopped in Peckham, never been to Milan. But I still flex every time I can. 23, I'm the dude. Walk in the room with that designer shoe. Couple G&T's trying to find my groove. Car 
Pussy flex with bare right you, uh, bare right you, I get busy Have a white girl mistake me for tin chick Got my sunglasses on as they blast my song, they gal them get jiggy Vibes inside, Friday night and I'm riding high Bash my plane and I'm catching the wine Feeling the love from all of my guys' faces I wanna see when I celebrate life To get to where I am at to dedicate time Supply by Christ, you can never take my nifle Talking by the air through the great vital Take that bullshit away from man I'm executing amazing plans When I spray the DJ getting all jacky Come my new bars and they kick like Jan Bang, made the soul worth a twang Come my new bars kick like Liu Kang Got all the ravers raising hands Just got four wheels like a transit van Shake a leg and shake it well Painting the town and raising hell Silk shirt, back of jeans Dior so far you can't take the smell Fragrant, flagrant, flamboyant and impatient Never time for a breather Got all the things that I'm chasing So when I let loose, I get loose Bare flavours, no dead food Just my best moves, no mosh pitting Cause that's uncool like nephews You queue up, we get let through Never taken for no next you Walk to the front, nod my head No please and no thank you 23, I'm the man ODN in the palm of my hand And I go out almost every week And rely on the ray for a drink and a dance 23, I don't slack Thinking up schemes, should I bring them grants? Shocked and peck, I've never been to my land But I still flex every time I can 23, I'm the dude Walk in the room with that designer shoe Couple G&T's trying to find my groove Can't see flex with bare attitude Bare attitude, I get this Have a white almost take me for tinge Got my sunglasses on as they blast my song They yell and get jig When I'm in the shower, I sing too much Mum thinks that I drink too much High notes and high rolling This life sweet, I can't give it up Make moves and I make merry My life would make for great ten High fives, all around Cut in the dance, I'm way friendly I like my trees, them bass heavy My garage skank is way deadly With wave gang fashionably late Helen knows when we make an entry You can tell by the aura, they know it's us Tell by the aura, they notice us With a drunk thing and she know what's up Too much sauce and it's potent stuff 23, I'm the man ODN in the palm of my hand And I go out almost every week And rely on the rave for a drink and a dance 23, I don't slack Thinking up schemes, should I bring them grants? Shocked in peck, I've never been to Milan But I still flex every time I can 23, I'm the dude Walk in the room with that designer shoe Couple G&T's trying to find my groove Can't see flex with bare attitude Uh, bare attitude, I get busy Have a white girl mistake me for tin cheek Got my sunglasses on as they blast my song They gal them get jiggy Give her real stamina She want a man pull her all night uh. Go on girl with the fat bumper Night time you want a soldier Bad man raise your middle finger We sex girl like all over From the kitchen to the sofa That's why she want a gangster She said you never get cocky like this Trigger man me not shoot and this. Girl love how me shine and Chris She want me a good sex in this I mean I don't want talk enough girl this I might cocky the fun on your miss And when she see me we are hungry like this Back from war a soldier business Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soldier Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real gangster Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soldier Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soldier Me tell a girl don't worry don't stress I look a little tired must undress Man a rider you don't know the rest I you all wanna keep me in dress Me know a girl in a east and a west Go on girl cause you clean and you fresh Give me a number you must get text Me like how you a flex you a flex She said she want a soldier like me But a man pay a SDC In a your city girl a flex with me Me know she pity she a step with me No girl does a wide head body No girl does a run down we In a England and overseas The girl them does a man over me Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soldier Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real gangster Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soldier Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soldier She want a mafia come put in the work In the room dog she a come first She sweat like a pipe just burst Me put it in she a boss it hurt They said I don't got the match and worse Me like the way you a twerk you a twerk Me know your ex-boyfriend is a jerk When me see you you a flirt you a flirt She was a man that's wicked and mad In the room me a tongue girl mad Sex in that part of me job When me call she a tell me she glad Me a soja she like what she have No girl does a fight for the dance All night we a ride we a ride And all night me a stop me a stop Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soja Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real gangster Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soja Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soja Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soja Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real gangster Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soja Girl I want a piece of a real rider Girl I want a piece of a real soja
This track is called Hossam and it's taken from the new Inner Worlds album from TSVI. The album takes in a huge spectrum of styles and tempos, bringing in influences as wide reaching as Middle Eastern belly dance, dancehall and trance. This album is the sound of a producer at the top of their game and it's an absolute must listen. Go check it out.
button there, pawn. Mom told me keep something by my side. One time in life, I nearly died. Only I kill a kick, kill a kill a son right now. None of them cast see me kill them collide. I put something in a them eye. If a boy diss me, I little man die. Don't ever test kill a man caught in a life. There's still one thing I can't deny. If a boy diss me, what brain I fly? My night I run, fry fish I fry. Stab in a face, juk in a eye, juk juk juk. With this home boy, them I try. Any boy diss me, I now go lie. Walk what house, you now go cry. No one jealous and rub off the time. No matter I'll be back on the road in time. Fine. Long time me bother warning. Long time no make nobody harm me. Learn them lesson the long time. Boy said some people for me. Can't keep trying. She said keep something there behind me. The elements mean more than a quarter. That mean a some boy get slaughtered. Anytime mama heard tell me if you kill a boy, push a boy head in the water. Murder the woman, the sister, her daughter. Me no need no gun for boy get slaughtered. Use me finger, squeak up the apple pan, Adam. Batman no care about Saddam. Neither who's seen. Batman will shoot out your brain. Oh, you're gonna give me gun talk after. When the mama figure so don't know where they pass off. If I'm a son of death, you're in a disaster. All because of them Chinese, mama earth and mama earth sons and daughter. The boy can't violate kill a man, can you know say a torture? Nothing but slaughter. Long time me mother want me Long time No make nobody harm me Learn them less the land Them boys send some devil for me Can't keep sending them stay She said keep something there upon me It's not a cartoon thing like rabbit and roger Boy can't tell kill a man about me mother Stab out your face with the African nagger Feast in your bad world my brother Well it's not a cartoon thing like rabbit and roger My bullet them me can't dodge Only a killer can kill a killer So right now in a your head back bullet going large Connect, 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 connect The whole of my dogs them can Put one shot in your face and annex Go to them side, the bullet, them a star from it We move from it, from it, from it, from it, from it But the pussy, them can't run from it Cause you know what's me gun, them big and boss And it bad just like it's tectonic Long time, me mother want me Long time, no make nobody harm me Learn them lesson, they love them Boy said, some devil for me You can keep trying She said, keep something, they pass me Long time, me mother want me no make nobody harm me Learn them lessons you learn Them boys said some devil for me Can't keep sending them still They said keep something they harm me that was Famous Eno featuring Killer P with Long Time, taken from Famous Eno's new Music for Clubs EP, which is out now on Swing Ting. The EP also features the likes of Sinjin Hawk, Gavachi and Unique, and is described by the label as sound system ready weaponry, and I can't disagree with that description. Up next is a new track from Silky called The Rhythm Junkie, out now on DJ Barely Legal's Pretty Weird Records. The Rhythm Junkie. <laughs>
That's it for today's Beatport podcast. Another big shout out to DJ Zinc for chatting to us. And I'm leaving you on this one from Morgan Hislop featuring Hairy Hands. It's the title track from his latest EP on Marvel Tracks, entitled Watch As My Ceramics Crumble. My name's High Class Filter and I've been your host for the last hour. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you again very soon with another podcast and another very special guest. Beatport podcast. I don't wanna go. Take me out of here real slow We haven't got much time Hold it in your mind Let it go Running out of time Feeling like tonight is in slow Hold it in your mind, let it